Ray, come with me. Together we can page 92, scene 4 of Empire Strikes Back. Oh, that is my favorite page. But I can't. I know my parents were a bunch of nobodies who abandoned me. I'm not really sure what that has to do with... Wait, what? So Rey in The Force Awakens is the character that for many of us introduced us to the concept of a Mary Sue. I never knew what a Mary Sue was before Rey came along, I know many of you didn't either, and since then the debate about whether or not Rey is a Mary Sue raged for a while then it kind of quieted down. But now that The Last Jedi is out and the parent question of Rey has been answered, we can finally put this question to rest. Is Rey a Mary Sue? Because in the video that I made on the topic, I break down exactly what a Mary Sue is and then I analyze The Force Awakens to see if she meets that category. But I end the video by pointing out that we really can't say with certainty whether she is a Mary Sue or not until we find out who her parents are. Because her being a Mary Sue hinges on whether or not her abilities have an explanation to them or not. And if she turned out to be Luke's daughter or maybe a clone of Darth Vader that turned out to be female for some reason, that would be a sufficient explanation because the Force is strong in the sky. Skywalker family. Well now we have the answer and her parents are... They were nobody. They were filthy junk traders who sold you off for drinking money. <laughs> the dead in a pauper's grave in the Jakku desert. You have no place in this story. You come from nothing. You're nothing. So if her parents were just average Joes, then Mary Sue confirmed, case closed, 100%, guilty as charged, right? Well, actually no. Because while it is true that her lineage doesn't explain any of her abilities, assuming we've been told her true lineage and they don't try to change it in the next movie, there still is an explanation as to why she has the abilities that she does without hardly any training. Darkness rises and light to meet it. So the reason she is overpowered and can master in seconds Jedi techniques that would take others a lifetime to perfect is because the Force is boosting her abilities in an effort to counteract the rising dark side. She is in effect a result of the Force trying to balance itself out. I warned my young apprentice that as he grew stronger, his equal in the light would rise. Skywalker, <laughs> I assumed wrongly. So presumably, if Luke had not cut himself off from the Force, it would have been him that was boosted in his Force abilities in order to counter Kylo Ren and Snoke. And oh boy, I would have absolutely loved to see that. How amazing would it have been to see Luke at his peak power level, able to stand against both Snoke and Kylo. That would have been really cool. Luke, behind you, it's another Imperial Walker. It's about to... <laughs> his lightsaber to deflect the blaster fire right back at that thing but it's still standing not for long lando don't tell me you can use the force against something that big of course size matters not the only difference is in your mind watch well, what's he doing now he's still standing how did we have missed him we didn't miss him he deflected our shots with that saber thing. What's he doing? What, what's he doing? I told you, he's just standing there. Doing something. My power grid's gone haywire and turbo blasters on overload. Dump the power from the engines. Hurry before he... But instead, of course, we get this. Go away. But yes, this explanation does in fact explain why she is able to do the things that she can do. Therefore, congratulations Ray, you are not a Mary Sue. But don't celebrate too soon, because Mary Sue or not, the main problem with the character of Rey still remains, which is it's very hard to relate to her or to feel invested in her character. And the reason for this is, whether it's in Star Wars, whether it's in the Terminator movies, the Alien franchise, the Kill Bill series, the Hunger Games, or Wonder Woman, the one thing all of them have in common is that we bond with the character by watching them struggle. This helps us to see the world from their perspective. We bond with them as we see them grow and develop to overcome their obstacles. 
This is why it affects us when they finally win the day because we've gone on this journey with them. And that's the problem with Rey. Because everything comes so easy to her, she doesn't struggle. And because she doesn't struggle, we don't bond with her. And because we don't bond with her, her victories are hollow and meaningless to us. I don't care that she refused to join the dark side with Kylo Ren because she was never tempted by the dark side in the first place. I want you to join me. We can rule together and bring a new order to the galaxy. Don't do this, man. It was so easy for her to simply say no, there was no struggle. So why should I care? With Luke, there was a genuine temptation for the dark side. That's why when he turns around and makes his stand and says no, it has an emotional punch to it. It has an impact. Because we saw he really was tempted by the dark side there. Rey never was. Not even for a second. Now you might think that if the force is boosting her power level in order to counteract the dark side, then by its definition she can't struggle with anything. Because it's not her fault that she's having all this power pumped into her. But I actually disagree. Just because she has all this power doesn't mean that she can control it. But I can help them. I feel the force. But you cannot control it. This is a dangerous time for you when you will be tempted by the dark side of the force. If this is the angle they want to go with with creating her character then her struggle throughout this trilogy should be kind of a bit like that of Superman. You know Superman has so much power that he needs to be so careful otherwise he'll create more harm than good. I feel like I live in a world made of cardboard always taking constant care not to break something, to break someone, never allowing myself to lose control, even for a moment or someone could die. It would go a little bit something like this. Perhaps Rey, while training, is unable to control her power and almost accidentally kills some innocent people. And then she says, this is too dangerous. This is too much pressure. I can't do this. And she can have that moment of refusing the call, which all heroes need to have. And then she has to find the strength inside herself to find a way to control this power. And let's not forget that in Star Wars, the more power you have, the more risk you are at of becoming corrupted by the dark side. So Rey should really be feeling the pull of the dark side because she has so much power that has not been tempered with the experience of having to learn it, very much like Anakin himself. The boy has exceptional skills. But he still has much to learn, Master. His abilities have made him, well, arrogant. That is what Rey's story should be about. That's how we can relate to her, despite her being the juggernaut bitch. In this way, we could see the world through her eyes. She was just sifting through junk on Jakku, and now all of a sudden, the fate of the entire galaxy is resting on her shoulders, and she never even asked for it. Now that's something we can get invested in. How easy would it be for her to just use the power self-servingly? But she struggles and struggles to do the right thing, and eventually overcomes and defeats the bad guys and saves the galaxy. Galaxy. That is Star Wars in a nutshell. So her being overpowered doesn't mean that she can't struggle. In fact, it means that she should struggle even more to control the power she has and to resist the pull of the dark side. But she doesn't struggle to control her power and she is never tempted by the dark side. Even when she goes into the dark side cave or whatever the hell that place was, it doesn't end badly for her. There's no temptation. She doesn't have a seeing her own face in Vader's mask kind of moment. And that's her going into the heart of darkness? Man, if she can resist that, then she's just perfect. She's perfect in every way. Well, sorry, but that's not interesting. It's boring. She's a boring character and she didn't need to be. She could have been interesting, but the films were so careful to never show her in a position of weakness. It means she never struggles. A number of you guys mentioned in the comment section of part one of this series that perhaps the reason that the scene of Rey racing into the caretaker's village got cut from the final movie was because it's the only scene that shows Ray looking foolish. Oh no, we can't have that. I mean, that would be sexist if she wasn't 100% in control 100% of the time. Here's a bit of commentary on when she's fighting with Kylo Ren against, you know, those red guys, okay? But they really mess up the choreography in there because there's one thing, there's this guy, okay? He's got this weird staffy thing and he splits it into two daggers and he's fighting Ray with two daggers. And there's this part where he, uh, he grabs Ray like this and uh, the knife in this hand disappears. They legitimately edit it out. Have a look. Slow motion. You see this? There's a dagger. And, uh, you know, Ray should be dead. She can't defend her back. The guy has a dagger right there. He could have stabbed her in the back. And they see this and they're like, whoops, we'll just 
make that dagger disappear. Is that a new force power, right? You can make weapons disappear? I don't know, but she should be dead. And this weird obsession that the filmmakers have of shielding Rey from ever being in a position of weakness out of fear of being called sexist, it's not just ruining her character, it's also ruining her hero's journey. Being a Star Wars fan, I'm sure you're all familiar with the hero's journey structure. It's basically the Star Wars blueprint. As you can see from the image on screen, there are a number of different stages and Rey at this point in the trilogy is around about here, about halfway through the ordeal or about two thirds of the way through her arc. And as Red Letter Media correctly pointed out in his review, Here's where Luke is at the same story moment in Empire. Here's where Rey is. Woo! I like this! Ben. Ben, please. Woo! I like this! She likes that. She should be at her lowest point. She has admitted to herself the truth of her parents, met her idol, Luke Skywalker, to be totally disappointed by him, bet everything on Kylo Ren turning good, and it is all blown up in her face. Everything she has ever known and believed in is currently smashed in a thousand pieces all around her. Every mentor she has had has been killed and the side of the war that she has joined is now down to only about half a dozen people. Yet Rey seems in good spirits. It doesn't seem to affect her at all. She's perfectly fine. She's smiling and fixing BB-8's antenna, happily meeting Poe for the first time, having a nice little heart to heart with Leia. Remember, this is supposed to be her lowest point and she isn't even even shedding a single tear. How are you supposed to relate to someone like that? It's, she's not acting like a human being. Now, this is where it's gonna come back and bite them in the ass. Because the final stage of the hero's journey is the road back after the bad guys are defeated. The hero returns home and he, or she in this case, returns as a resurrected hero. Meaning he is a new man, a changed man. What he has experienced and learned over the course of his journey has changed him forever and he returns with the elixir, meaning that he returns with wisdom and knowledge that he didn't have when he left. And the reason that he has that wisdom and is a changed man is because of all the ordeals that he suffered and the obstacles that he overcome. What the hell kind of elixir is Rey going to return with when the ordeals that she went through barely even affected her at all? How is she going to return as a resurrected hero, a changed person, when she is still the exact same person as when we first met her? I just can't imagine her at the end of episode 9 returning to Jakku as a changed person. When Luke returned to Tatooine, he returned like this. <laughs> He returned and destroyed the most powerful crime lord on the planet like he was nothing. He'd come a long way from just being this whining farm boy. But I was going into Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. It's your choice, but I warn you not to underestimate my power. <laughs> That's the hero's journey. But what's Rey going to do? Show up at the junkyard again and tell Simon Pegg that she wants extra portions? I don't think he will give a damn. I don't think anyone will give a damn. People there will just be like, oh, Rey's back. You know, she was away for a while. Because she's basically the same person. She's not changed. There's no hero resurrection to be had. There's no elixir to be shared. Because she has been robbed of these vital section of the hero's journey out of fear of presenting a female character in a negative light. Now you may notice that the franchises I mentioned earlier while emphasizing the importance of a character struggling were all franchises that had strong female leads because I am sick and tired of hearing this lie from people like J.J. Abrams saying that if we have a problem with Rey, it must be because we hate women. When there are all of these other examples of strong female characters in movies that are typically male franchises and we all love them. I mean, for God's sake, Ripley and Alien, that came out in 1970 and these idiots at Disney want to crap on about how they're so ahead of the times in having strong female characters. No, you're not ahead of the times. You're actually about 30 years behind the times. Stop pretending like this is cutting edge. It's not. You suck because they did strong female characters better 30 years ago. I really wish they would just drop this as an excuse. Just drop it because it's not true. It's so dumb. It's so stupid. And it's been so thoroughly debunked by so many examples over so 
so many years, I just wish they would shut up with the whole sexism thing every time they face criticism. It's ruining movies, it's ruining characters, and it's actually creating the exact opposite of what is intended. When I see Linda Hamilton returning to the Terminator franchise now, rather than being happy to see her again, thanks to idiots like J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson and all this crap with the whole strong women thing, now I just think they're going to ruin her. She was a strong female character before, that was done right, now they're going to ruin it. So they've actually created the exact problem they were trying to prevent in the first place. It's a little bit like if someone is asking you if you're okay and you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. And they're like, are you sure you're okay? And you're like, yeah, I'm fine. And they're like, are you sure you're okay? And you're like, yes, I'm fine. And then they're like, oh, see, I knew you weren't fine. It's, it's kind of like the cinematic version of that. Do you have a problem with female characters? No. Do you have a problem with female characters? No, I don't. Do you have a problem with... Look where you shut up about female characters. Up, oh, see, we knew you were sexist. That's basically what they've done. It's not the strong female character part that we hate. It's the way they do it. They do it in the most obnoxious way possible and it sucks all the fun out of the characters. Like their version of a strong female character is a boring female character. But look, in all fairness, I, I do have to be honest about this. Despite everything I've said about um, what Ray's parentage means to the question of her being a Mary Sue or not and all that sort of stuff, I do have to admit that the answer they gave about whose Ray's parents were is probably the only answer they could have given that was unexpected. And this actually isn't Ryan Johnson's fault. It's actually J.J. Abrams' fault because he left all these questions open, which is something in the age of the internet you simply can't do because we've, we've seen what happens. If you leave a question unanswered, Everyone on the internet creates a billion different theories and guaranteed there's going to be someone in there who's come up with the same theory as what they're going to use in the movie and there's going to be loads of other theories that are actually far more intriguing. So either you pick a theory that someone has already used or you pick one that's not as interesting as all the other ones out there. So you, you can't do that. You can't leave a question open at the end of a movie and say we'll answer it in the next one because you, you snooker yourself. So really what could Ryan Johnson have done other than what he did in saying they were no Nobody's. That was really the only unexpected answer he could have given. And I think there's actually only one person on the whole internet that actually guessed that, that actually predicted that. So do I really think there's no hope for there to be a cool reveal when it comes to Ray's origin? No, I wouldn't say that at all. It's just not going to be anything like we expect it to be. My best guess is that her parents are going to be irrelevant to the story, and they left her on Jakku for a simple reason, and maybe had intentions on coming back for her and something happened to them. I think Rey herself was chosen at random by the Force to fill some role, like how everyone is chosen at random by the Force. Even Shmi Skywalker was likely chosen completely at random to give birth to the Chosen One. I think Rey's overall purpose is to help bring balance to the Force. I'll uh, actually include a link to him below because he does deserve credit, he did get it right and he's the only one who said it, so credit where credit is due. And I do actually like the idea that you don't have to be a Skywalker to be a Jedi. I mean, that's that's always been a bit of a limitation, like especially going through the prequels and I understand it was focusing on Anakin and all that, but the, the appeal of the original movies was that really anyone could be a Jedi. You don't have to be a Skywalker. So I kind of like that the movies have gone back to that. Why this means that Rey now somehow is the one who needs to inherit at Luke's lightsaber. That seems a little strange. I mean, I actually think it would be better if the lightsaber went to Kylo Ren. He actually is the Skywalker. That lightsaber, it belongs to me. It would be kind of more interesting to see like that old lightsaber with like a red crystal put in it with a red blade. I mean, wouldn't you like to see that? I'd like to see that too. See, now I'm doing my own theory thing. And despite all my criticism of the character of Rey, I think Daisy Ridley's performance as Rey, she's great. She's great. And you know, the faults with the character are not Daisy Ridley's performance. And uh, I think if she had had better writing and they have sort of fleshed out her character to make her more human, you know, I mean, she's, she's adorable. She's adorable. How could you not like her? Look at that face. How could you not like that face? 